Well, the name says it all, doesn't it? Suburban. And that's what this vehicle's attuned to. Not something you want to pilot through small city streets, but if you've got a big family with big amounts of stuff and maybe you're big people on top of that, this is America's SUV. Now, spotting the new Suburban is really easy. The look is quite dramatically different. The face is much more crisp and bold. You've got this really strong feature line right here around the belt line that's causing the vehicle to look a little lower and longer. And the same thing goes for the way they've recontoured that third quarter rear side glass. All of it says a long stretch. The 15 also has a new way of integrating doors into body. Instead of clamshelling over, they now fit inside. Everything's big in the cabin. It fits the vehicle's overall dimensions, of course. It also makes it very tactily satisfying. Lots of storage everywhere, of course. Cup holders and bins for phones. And, and look at this. This bin is so large, it actually qualifies as a seat for a child. Don't do that. Now, your eyes first drawn to this Chevy MyLink head unit, which in Chevy General Motors fashion has this little Peaky Boo smuggler's box back behind it. And you've also got a USB port there, one of like seven in the vehicle. Now, this MyLink rig with navigation is actually optional. You won't get the nav package unless you do tick the right box, which we'll talk about later. I find the processing's a little slow. Of course, it is doing 3D building, rendering, which I don't find terribly useful. But the way it lays out streets and labels is some of the best in the business. Navigation. What type of destination? Street address. It's a little slow on the uptake, but it does let you give addresses in one straight blurb, not piece by piece. That's good. Siri, do I have any text messages? Chevy was an early adopter of Siri Eyes Free, which lets you connect a paired iPhone for message composition without looking at the screen. Otherwise, app support on this vehicle is basically Pandora predictive music, Stitcher podcast streaming, and TuneIn live radio station streaming. Beyond that, your media sources are pretty much everything you want. You've got CD, iPod, USB jack, SD card slot, which plays video, by the way, though a little bulkily in this case. Bluetooth streaming, obviously. And in this car, we have a rear seat entertainment system as well. We'll look at that in a second. Meta tag layout is really good, and I like the fact that all the touchscreen buttons, like everything in this car, are big and easy to access. I just keep getting bedeviled by the slow processing of everything. Now, through OnStar, this is going to be one of the first vehicles out that has an integrated 4G connection. Our vehicle doesn't have it yet. We're shooting in mid-2014. Later in the year, that should be coming online, though, if you're going to order one of these. Oh, by the way, this is one of the first cars out there that has a front center airbag. This is between the two front passengers, so if there's an impact, you don't get injured by hitting each other. Or, if it's just you in the front seat, it reduces your injury from flopping over the console. Now, drive controls in this vehicle are very traditional. You've got a classic American stalk-mounted lever up here. If you want to do your own shifting, it's on this rocker switch here on that lever. Over here, you've got your four-wheel drive controls. Most folks will leave it in auto, but you've got your two, four high, and four low all located over here. They make it very simple. No levers to pull, no clunky stuff. It's all nicely sanitized. There are no drive modes of sorts in this car, unless you want to count towing and trailer mode. You've got buttons for that, and controls are for braking over here. But otherwise, there's no sport or nonsense of that type. It's not that kind of vehicle. Now, GM has been doing something that gives you an alert in the bottom of the seat with a vibration. There's one on the left and one on the right, right down here in the bolsters. If you've got a sonar indication on the left, you'll feel it there. On the right, you'll feel it there. Front and back, you'll get both of them vibrating at once. I gotta say, it gets your attention very well. More than beeps and lights, it all sound alike. On the other hand, though, it's not very specific information. You have to say, what? What does that mean every time? Blind spot detection, cross traffic alert back there, lane departure warning, those are all passive. Front collision warning can also be set to active braking, however. And of course, the optional adaptive cruise control will actively maintain both speed and distance. Now, here in the engine bay is an interesting story. You know, a lot of Fords are going to turbo V6s. Not this guy, 5.3 liter V8. Modernized with direct injection, but decidedly old school in two other ways. It's overhead valve, not overhead cam, and just two valves per cylinder, where almost every other engine in the world is four. And the power it makes is 355 horse, 383 foot-pounds of torque. Perfectly good numbers, of course, but this is a big vehicle. Active cylinder management is here. It cleaves this V8 into a V4 when you're cruising or coasting. 
and you'll pick up one mile per gallon if you choose the rear-wheel drive configuration. Driving this new Suburban tells me everything I need to know about General Motors market research, and here's why. This vehicle screams big, heavy, isolated, and safe. Clearly attributes they've heard over and over from Suburban owners that they want to stay in this vehicle. It's got a fair amount of power, as we notice, but it's not responsive to the throttle. Steering is isolated as well. I'm not that impressed with what this magnetic ride control suspension is doing. I know it's very technologically advanced, but I'm just feeling too much of the little details in the road printing through the bottom of my seat. But this is your classic original SUV. Big, high riding, in command, and lots of space, and burly. Now our 2015 Suburban LTZ, top of the line, starts off about 62.7 with destination. 3,000 more if you wanted four-wheel drive like ours. The key package to go see net style is dorkily called Sun Entertainment and Destinations. For a little over 3,300, you get the MyLink with navigation, the dual 9-inch Blu-ray rear seat entertainment rig, and the power sunroof. Adaptive Cruise is 1,700 more, and another 500 bucks will get you a hotspot, though right now it's still a 3G hotspot. Wait till later in 2014 to get the 4G powered one through the OnStar services package. A little over 71 grand the way we see it.